Hey, how's it going guys? Domino Paris 21 here and back again with another local support for you guys. Now, I'm a little late on this one uh, just because uh, these past few weeks I've actually been attending a few multiple locals uh, playing my Amon Reverse deck as you see here. Uh, overall, ever since my first profile that of course that I have already on my channel for this deck, uh, I've been going through, you know, um, some testing with it and just uh, really trying to get to the trying to get the deck to where I feel very comfortable with, um, especially you know combating uh, the meta we're looking at, you know, uh, set 12 and looking for and uh, going forward. Um, so I have been attending multiple locals, uh, some small, some a little bigger than others. Uh, so just to really uh, try to get this deck to where I, uh, you know, I'm 100%, um, you know, comfortable with and confident in. Uh, so I, so I think like right now, uh, with the current build I am running with my, especially the recent locals I've been at, I'm really really happy with um, with the results that this deck has been producing. Really happy with just overall how the deck has has been running. So it's definitely been running a lot better uh, than pretty much I expected overall. Um, but yeah, uh, so I'm actually going to be talking about just a few locals uh, in particular uh, that I've been to with this deck. So starting off with the first locals that I attended, um, which w which I actually went in playing uh, my first version of this deck, uh, which is of course the one that is already featured on my channel. Um, now, of course, the uh, the deck that the deck list that I did feature on my channel already, I didn't really necessarily, um, you know, test it out quite thoroughly. So this first Locals was kind of like the first test for that list. Um, we ended up just doing four rounds um, and just uh, top four split. But uh, I ended up just going two and two, which of course is a mediocre performance, um, usually on my part for what I'm usually uh, used to doing. Um, overall, um, let's see, it's kind of hard to remember the exact details because it's, uh, it's been a little while, but uh, if Round one, I played against uh, Dragonic Descendant, Eradicators, of course. So I was actually able to uh, win that round. Uh, I believe it was 2-0. Uh, just the fact that I was, you know, cross-ridden, it made it a little bit harder uh, for my opponent to, you know, hit me effectively, especially with Descendant. Uh, Descendant, of course, is still a very strong card and still very annoying to deal with. But uh, the fact that I was cross-ridden and I was able to kind of build advantage by pressuring a little bit early... Um, with the extra crit by Mon Reverse, it allowed me just to kind of um, kind of uh, stay in control of the game. So I was able to do that for two games. Um, the next round, I played against Jewel Knights, and uh, I mean, really, not much to say about that matchup. Uh, Jewel Knights uh, definitely has some nice little bit of a pressure. Uh, Vanguard themselves, you know, using Ashley uh, Break Ride with extra crits and Salome as well. Um, so one thing, one thing that Jewel Knights definitely has over Dark Irregulars is the fact is that they're able just to create advantage uh, for themselves and of course uh, being able to simply tutor to their field. So it's really hard for Dark Irregulars to really combat that, especially the build I have because it's more of a control pressure build, which uh, I, think if, I think for the most part, you know, Jewel Knights do a really good job countering that type of style of play, especially for, um, for this particular deck. Uh, so uh, overall, you know, my opponent played really well. Uh, I, I'll admit there were a few games where, or there were like more often times than not where I felt like he kind of, you know, was getting a little lucky hitting his triggers and such. But um, you know, when I look back at the at my few games I played, I did make a few misplays. You know, like I actually made a, a bad decision on uh, on certain situations on when it came to guarding and uh, my attack choices and such. So uh, I mean, you always we always have to learn from our mistakes and just try and and, uh, and grow from that. So I was so I lost that round. And then uh, next round I played, I'm trying to remember, uh, Link Joker, Schwartz Child Dragon. Uh, just Link Joker could definitely be a tough matchup for DIs in general. Um, again, you know, I felt like I wasn't really doing anything wrong with the deck um, for that round. I felt like my opponent, I guess, was getting a little bit lucky um, hitting triggers again on me. And, I mean, he was just hitting his ride chain off perfectly. And everything was kind of running perfectly for him. Um, like, I just remember one game, like, he kind of just out -tri he triggered me really, he, he hit a lot of triggers on me early on, and it was just hard for me to recover from that, and then, like, uh, the other game, he, I just, I couldn't draw a good field, and by the time I was able to at least assemble a decent field, I mean, he was already, he already had the Persona Blast for Short Child, so, it's really just over, oh, to overcome Link Joker when you can't open strongly with DIs, or you're eating triggers all day, so, but nonetheless, you know, like I said, you know, my opponent played, uh, very well, 
for what was handed to him, I mean, you know, although you may be hitting triggers, you may be getting lucky, you still gotta, you know, take advantage of that and make sure that you win when that happens to you. So, I mean, there's really not much I can do there. Um, it, 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 you know, it's gonna happen. Sometimes you just draw bad and, you know, luck is not always gonna be on your side for some rounds. And then final round, uh, I played against one of my good buddies who actually is a dedicated Nova Grapple player. He was playing, of course, Ethics Buster with uh, Azure Dragon, which actually was very interesting. Um, I was able to just win that game, um, just like I said here, just because, um, just for the fact is I'm playing a control pressure style of play. Uh, it does create a, a pretty bad matchup for Novas, um, especially when, you know, they're not able to, you know, essentially continue to draw um, an ideal hand, an ideal field. Uh, so um, it, I was able to I was able to win that round just simply for having a great matchup and taking full advantage of it. Uh, so yeah, uh, overall, just like I said, went two and two in that locals. So overall, I, I kind of, there was a few things I kind of felt that um, I don't know. I felt like the I felt like uh, the deck could improve. I felt like there was a few things missing um, from my from my build. So I just kind of took another look at it and kind of did a few more modifications and then. Uh, went into a few other smaller locals um, on these during these past two weeks um, and uh, oh, one of them actually was able to go undefeated in um, I can't remember the exact details again I, I think we played like three four rounds um, they went by pretty quickly I just remember playing against eradicators um, a, a revenger deck but um, the granted I, I you know it always feels good to beat revengers but um, I but um, the, my opponent's build wasn't actually complete. So, uh, you know, I felt kind of bad with about that, but, um, and I faced, like, Kagiro and, like, another Nova player, and then, uh, there was another Locals where I actually played, um, you know, we just played three rounds, it was a very, very smaller, more, more smaller Locals, but, um, we had a pretty strong player base as well, uh, I just remember, uh, I played against, uh, Revengers, and I ended up going, uh, I ended up losing that round 1-2 to the Revengers, um, but the, the second loss I took that round, against Revengers, I actually made a really bad mistake, and I don't know, like, I was like, you know, I, I feel like an idiot for the mistake I did, and um, it was like, when he was um, using Raging Form Dragon skill, I realized, I didn't realize until after that he actually retired a Creeping Dark Goat, which you can't use for Raging Form, since uh, Creeping Dark Goat is not a Revenger, so I did not catch it in time, I didn't realize until like, after the game was done, so I feel kind of like an idiot for uh, letting that go by, and and, uh, like, I, I honestly can tell you that it was just my opponent who made a mistake as well because he was kind of new with the deck as well. I know he's not, like, you know, a, uh, a, a deceiving, cheating type of player. So it was just really a mistake on both parts that we should have caught. Um, but overall, I mean, I really loved I feel really felt comfortable with that matchup with uh, Revengers. I really loved the build. I really loved um, the, the latest build that I had. Um, so I, I, I really do feel really comfortable against, uh, uh, against that matchup. Um, then I played against, uh, let me think, Spike Brothers, Bad and Dragger. Uh, again, a control pressure style deck. Um, it's really, really good against Spike Brothers, um, especially, you know, in Mon Reverse, uh, capable of pressuring them at 3 damage with extra crit, force out cards from their hands a little early on, and be able to just control their field at the same time. It's really, really effective against Spike Brothers and being cross it as well. And, uh, let me see. I'm sorry, guys. It's hard to remember every, every little detail, but that goes on. Uh, I played against uh, Eradicators. Excuse me. Yeah, it was Eradicators. It was a nice little, uh, a nice, um, interesting build he had. Uh, my opponent had. Uh, he was playing uh, Dragonic Descendant again, and uh, he was really more focused on Dragonic Descendant since he was playing the Superior Ride and such. Um, but like I said, it's the same thing. Uh, the fact that I was cross I was able to effectively uh, keep. Them. I was able to effectively, you know, pressure him um, with the extra crit with the Mon Reverse. And um, and being able to control the field, his board presence as well. Um, just the deck was just running perfectly for me, so I was able just to uh, keep the game state in my favor. So uh, overall, um, I was able to go uh, two one um, in that locals, and then we just um, I don't know, we just end up splitting top and such because um, it was snowing that day, so we kind of had to like leave early. So overall, I'm really happy with how the deck is running. Uh, I'm really happy with this build. Feel very comfortable now, uh, especially taking on. Uh, on the meta, so uh, really, really, really good. And you know, Dark Irregulars, uh, especially Mon Reverse, definitely a great improvement for um, DIs in general, something that they've been needing for a while. And uh, definitely, I think with Mon Reverse, uh, I mean, Dark Irregulars can definitely be a, pr a pretty well competitive deck with the right build, with the right player. So, before I let you guys go, uh, let me actually just go ahead and just uh, 
briefly just show uh, show you showcase uh, the deck, my recent build that I've been uh, taking my locals for you guys. Mm -hmm. So let's get to. It. All right, guys. So starting off for the starter, I still playing. I am still playing the Devil in Shadow. Um, it's like I said before in my uh, other deck, in my first deck profile um, for this deck. If you're not playing Dimension Creeper in the deck, then you should not. Then Devil in Shadow should always be the ideal choice. Um, Greedy Hand, like I said, is optimal if you are playing Dimension Creeper. Other than that, Devil in Shadow is really uh, the starter to play. Really good, just to you know help it, uh, potentially um, miss grading, but also at the same time it helps uh, get your cross right off um, pretty consistently. And like I always say, you know if it's just sitting dead on your field. Uh, you don't really need to use them, then just simply lock it with Amon Reverse or feed it to regular Amon. So there's no such thing as dead cards in the deck as always. Great threes. Four Amon Reverse. And I am running the four regular Amon. Um, my first uh, version, I actually ran um, three. But I just like the four, um, just because um, with a few changes I actually made with my uh, card, with, um, with all my card choices, I was able to actually free up an extra slot to play the fourth Amon. Um, and definitely, definitely uh, um, find uh, the four mons to be a lot more preferable, especially just trying to get the uh, cross right off more consistently, because even if you open the mon reverse, you still have a, a good chance of soul charging uh, one of these, so um, really, really good at four. Uh, so simple as that. And of course, no break rides still. I still don't like break rides, so I think uh, just so, so solely focusing on the cross ride is really the more optimal way to build this deck. Then you have your four 12k attackers, four Hell's Draw, and then I am running uh, three Gwyn the Ripper. I previously, of course, was running uh, four, making it 12 grade twos and like seven grade threes. But like I said, I had, uh, with a few changes, I actually made my green one lineup. I actually didn't uh, have, I didn't really need to play the fourth one, so freed up some space. But Gwyn's really, really amazing card. Be able to knock out any of those precious grade ones certain decks rely on, like Doran for Avengers and such, and just really knocking out some key boosters that your opponent really needs to take on your cross ridden vanguard. And they grade ones. Four perfect guards. Uh, excuse me. Uh, four Hell's Deal. Uh, three Doreen the Thruster. Um, I decided to actually cut down the Doreens to three just because, um, you know, while I love Doreen and four was pretty good, um, I didn't really necessarily rely on her as much. And just drawing into multiples of her is not necessarily ideal because a lot of times you are locking one of your uh, rear guard boosters anyway. So as long as you can at least have one put behind the rear guard booster, or very rarely you usually put behind the vanguard, uh, just to try to make some big pushes. That's really um, th that's usually how I use Doreen anyway. So three is definitely a perfect number for her. And then for the big change I did make, I am running three bloody caps. Shares the same skill as Gwen. Place on uh, when you place on the field, count blast two to uh, retire a grade two or less. Um, uh, excuse me, rear guard. So it's really good. So essentially by running three bloody caps. And three Gwyns. I mean, I'm essentially running six copies of these, so that way you get to see these more uh, often and more consistently, uh, just to make full use of your Cow Blast. Because obviously, you know, you can damage check these and soul charge these, so you've got to make sure you draw into these consistently. So, yeah, it's really good. Uh, so yeah. And oh yeah, triggers, 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 triggers. Triggers are pretty much the same, guys. You just run the a crit. Definitely uh, want to mix it up, just so your opponent can't guess ratios. Um, for Shirley's, if obviously since I'm playing Doreen, that's mainly why I play the Shirley's, just because she's obviously a double soul charge. If I, if you actually choose not to play Doreen the Thruster in your deck, I actually suggest just running 12 crits. Um, it's just a lot better uh, for the deck to run 12 crits. But like I said, since I'm running Doreen, Shirley's are just too good not to run. And then you have four heal. So simple as that. But yeah, guys, that is my locals report and uh, just a little bit update of what's going on with my deck. As always, leave a comment down below. Uh, and let me know with any questions or concerns you may have and such. And as always, leave a thumbs up on the video. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Well, on that, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. And see you guys next time.